and I want to give the floor to Lera Kichanova. And her speech is uh, Free Generation Revolutionary Day, and she will tell you about how it's very hard to be a normal person in Russia. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I'm really anxious because uh, being after Mr. Palmer, you have a will to do something to change the world, but I will uh, tell you about new free generation, revolution day after day, and we did a good job on finding a good name for that. And I will tell you that revolution is not just... Uh, the way out is not just standing on a square, which is very important in any country to stop, because this is where global change starts, but also participating in, in educational events like now and every day participation in events that will lead to reforms and change in the society towards uh, prosperous uh, society, prosperous world, and really, as Nikita said, I will tell you about uh, how difficult it is to support ideas of freedom and wish Ukraine a prosperity and wish Russia prosperity and uh, that we can go the same way and we, despite all contradictions, we want to stay in touch and despite the will of politics to restore Iron Curtain that once divided our country from the Western world. As we probably know, we have a common past until 1991. We used to be one country, then it collapsed. Fortunately, I spent a few years in this totalitarian state. I was born in 1991, well, a few months. And, uh, in these countries of the Eastern Bloc, they decided they need to switch from totalitarianism to free society. And unfortunately, in Russia, these reforms were not that successful as in uh, some other countries. And as a result, people were unhappy with what, with the result and oligarchs seized the power and uh, it turned out that these new rulers are the same post-Soviet uh, bureaucrats and everybody blamed it on liberals and if you're liberal you have to explain that we are not like that we drew for it and when it was probably 2008 and 2009 and due to internet and the summer schools uh, Andrew Larionov talked about with the participation of Tkaha Bindekidze we created a new circle of uh, supporters of freedom and we decided that we want to influence something uh, influence the situation in the country and we are not happy with the political uh, and economical situation in the world and we are moving back to USSR and we gathered and started to think what we should do and we created a libertarian party and we took this world libertarianism and it's quite complicated to pronounce and but we wanted to emphasize that the word liberal is is quite contradictory but we have a new word as Tom said, and we faced a new issue, what we should do. We should focus on the educational uh, events or political uh, campaigns, like wave our flags, because both things 
seem to be uh, oriented on a very far future because it was clear that the country is walking different way, not towards the liberty and uh, decrease of the role of the state in people's lives. But we realized that policy alone is not enough. You know, this, so if we are a party, we should go outside and promote our ideas that our role is also to tell uh, our generation with that because the, the average age of the party, mem of the party members is 28 years. So these were young people in Moscow, my peers, and we started, we decided that we should also do the raise awareness and think the idea of liberty is quite underestimated for the people's happiness. We started to organize round tables with experts including debates, we had movie clubs and invited experts from both sides. We see Yegor Holmogorov as an opponent, maybe you know this person, is a big advocate of Novorossiya, he was defending traditional values and we were, we said that it's time to leave them Behind. And we had debates, in this case with communists, you see this red flag. We talked about economy in Russia and about karma reforms. Our biggest project so far uh, is our Adam Smith readings, and we had six readings so far. The format is quite similar to what we have today, probably more academical. They had three sections according to the works of Adam Smith, who is quite prominent figure in classical libertarianism, a uh, section with economists, uh, political rhetorics, where we say, where we talk about current politics, uh, not only with Russian, Russians, yeah, but also morale, uh, where we talk about morale and the law and their relations, and we had uh, speakers like Tom Pal Palmer, Larissa Brokova, Andrei Larionov, who will have their speeches today according to the agenda. And uh, the rooms were full, I think 300 people are in this room, and many people came from other regions of Russia, as you know, Russia is quite big, and it's, you have to go a long way. <clears throat> and this place was a place where all uh, Russian advocates of freedom gather once a year to meet and exchange ideas. And after these Adam Smith readings, we understood that you should not only do this once a year, but you have to go <coughs> to different regions. We have lots of different regions in the country, and so we've managed to expand our uh, membership. Just because across the regions you have quite tempered political life whenever anything happens, whenever there's an event, people gladly want to join it and go for it. Those who want to express their minds and those who want to listen do go for it. And the idea was not just to seem smart going somewhere from Moscow trying to present some ideas from most intelligent, well-known people. We also call local mind setters in local areas, maybe leaders of anti-corruption funds, volunteer organizations, local political scientists, entrepreneurs. So we also call upon everybody to join and speak 
and therefore we have the sufficient dialogue. We try to explain that this interference with this governance issues, regulation, barrier cutting, this will help this individual region in so, in so, so many areas to actually become successful and ensure prosperity. And this is the way we are trying to actually collect hundreds Right now we have 550 people on our party list because the people have seen that somebody was joining not just to wave the flag but just someone that is possessing a real program and ideas. And therefore we also publish our own newspaper that we call Atlantis or Atlant. Nevertheless, since we're the party, like I said, we also went down in the streets and the flag with the snake, don't step on me, which says in translation to Russian, a symbol of our party, this is an eagle, just because we know that on the uh, Russian emblem there is an imperialistic eagle, double-headed eagle, that is actually manifesting uh, very strong government, strong power. However, we believe that citizens of Ukraine have to be free people. That's why our eagle is waving and flying in the air. That's why we call this series of our activities like that Tea Party movement in the analogy across for, for uh, liberty and economic liberty, this, is, was, this was against the trade laws and other regulations that were passed. To involve the youngsters, we actually involved our Guy Fox movement with put on masks. It was before the Occupy movement, so they were not related with left activists. It was just against restrictions towards internet users and in this case we actually exploited anonymity of people who joined and back in 2011 we had parliamentary election in Russia many because of the great movement online became observers and have seen and witnessed with their own eyes how the election was falsified how uh, there was a drop in on uh, actually the district commissions, how the buses, shuttle buses were dropping people at the election points. Uh, that was actually an unexpected thing for the both the oppositional activists and also for everybody because more than 100,000 people came in the street. It was this academician Sakharov uh, Avenue. You can see right there in the picture that there are different flags. There is also red communist flags or orange flags for solidarity movement uh, are democrats and also imperialistic flags from nationalists and somewhere there is even libertarian flags right there there are greens as well so what are we going to imagine? Everybody was there. There was the uniform opposition. It was most of the people were without flags, so they were first comers, newcomers, newbies for the meetings like that. So over dozens of years, people were told that policies is only for cynics or mad people. Either you use or you are used. Then if you come out, come out in the street, you are one of the two, and the meetings just put together 100 to 5,000, 3,000 people, I think it was the maximum against the forest cuts. It was the biggest, biggest riot of the last 10 years. And the people in the streets were thinking, where had we been before? So the spirit in the whole city was like that. Lectures and teachers from schools and universities told students, you you got to be careful tomorrow because everybody knew that I was aware that people, students, taxi drivers, uh, and lecturers were going in the streets to protest. So that was kind of spirit we had. Uh, we also joined that, that those uh, meetings and uh, just owing to this kind of uprising, we managed to get 500 people, according to the uh, Russian regulation, to register our party. And we had a meeting where we actually 
actually applied for our membership, and I was elected as one of the municipal uh, members of legislature. Moscow is a big city, more than six million people residing in it right now, and it is divided into districts, and in each district there is a legislature, a council of members. So I was one of the hundreds of people who were actually elected on the wave of protest, and we decided that we can change things right now if we take things into our, grab things into our hands, and we grab this country, and we know what to do, and then we're going to make fair and free election, because the protests were so huge. And partly because th that is why we actually were elected there, too. Because those who were thinking about falsification, they were thinking about how to make Putin win, because elections took place on March the 4th, and there was a one-day election, both the municipal and presidential. And uh, we could actually go and agitate people with white straps on, on, your, on your shoulders. You would be led by people in their houses, have some tea. Everybody had the same wave. And our motto was like, everything is only started. But unfortunately, in the outcome, we had totally different things going on. Different what we expected was on March the 4th, the President Putin was re-elected third time already for a longer period than before because they changed the constitution right now the presidential term is seven years not four like it used to be and therefore a bit of sorrow things were going on and the number of political prisoners increased we've always had political prisoners the well-known ones you know Mikhail Khodorkovsky who was released yeah, last year but at that time, we always had some activists who were put to jail because of some uh, somebody's minded reasons when they were uh, thrown in by drugs. And, and there was a real, on the 6th of May, before the presidential inauguration ceremony, there was a big, last, last big meeting in the street. It was the last biggest meeting with a hope for change, people were have had very festive thinking, festive in a sunny day of May, and in the end of the day when they uh, reached the uh, Bolotnaya Square, they were beaten by Oman, the special troopers, and those who were detained were actually put to jail. Most of those people, in their majority, at the end of the day, we had more than 30 of them. They were not even activists, not even leaders in politics, not even party leaders. Most of them came in the street for the first time ever in their lives, and they could not even imagine what would be going on there. So you understand that this is very simple tactics. We just uh, put strangers into jail so that everybody else got scared. So just to behead all the movement, and people would be just think they would be safe to elect the most promising and the most stable leaders. So for the next meeting, nobody will go like that. So they were blamed of uh, organizing massive disorder. They were just peculiar and very uncompromising blames that they were funded by Georgian instructors. They, were, they would be blowing up Kremlin and the subway and there was a range of different regulation passed by this repressive government seems like Putin was really offended by those people who were living in that crap for dozens of years However, in most of the cases, this is a myth that was spread by in the Reed website right now, just recently, which is one of the uh, key sponsors of our conference. Uh, it was a publication about the myths, but the myth was cultivated very well that we give you welfare. We, we are stealing a little bit from you, but just a bit, just a knob. But you better go to for the elections, you have your cars, you go abroad, you have your dacha houses, 
Uh, but you don't go to protest anywhere. But people went outside of the country, they saw the democracy, they saw the fair election process, and they thought, why are these guys living better life than we do? And that's why through protest they would like to, they wanted to actually uh, push the idea. So, and the government decided then, okay, since you interfere with uh, our, our issues, we're going to interfere with your lives. So there was a law passed on foreign agents, the so-called, this is a, so, something paranoid from government, this is a PK from our party against the Duma, Russian Duma. And right now our organization is a non-commercial, non-for-profit organization, meaning any observation missions in the election process Sometimes you can end up falling under that law. I mean, some of the foundations that collect money for children treatment, if they get like money from abroad, and if government thinks they are involved in some kind of politics, or some of their representatives say they do not really like the war that Russia made on Ukraine, that this organization has to be registered as a foreign agent and just because everybody believes these all organizations all together decided to offend the Russian government, it, it means like you put a yellow, a yellow star on your shoulder in a Nazi Germany. So this uh, forbidden of uh, foreign adoptions of children. It was called Dima Yakovlev's law under the name of a, of a young guy who was adopted by an American family and uh, at the end of the day he died there. And he was the crucified, this law was crucified as a law of bastards, because bastards can cover their efforts in these political games. So Americans are not no longer allowed to adopt Russian children anymore. And uh, at the end of, uh, of the day, everybody was ready actually to go to the United States, especially those untreated diseases. And there were reports that those children are dying in the uh, Russian hospitals because nobody is willing to adopt them in Russia. So there was a law like that passed already in the Duma. The blacklist law, I mean, the internet blacklist law, we have a very good agency overseeing internet. This is a demonized agency recently because on behalf of that agency, some most horrific things are being done are being done because they're closing the most popular opposition uh, and truthful, if I call it like that. Uh, they block bloggers, they block web resources, tweets, uh, your personal Facebook pages. So any court can actually put your website on the blacklist for extreme ideas, for anything you saying that is not in line with the official government's position. And therefore, we have such kind of censorship online. And for me personally, it's quite painful to talk about, but however, I don't even have to say this. After the Olympic Games in Sochi, uh, Vladimir Putin actually lost his, his mind and lost his brain. We've seen what's happened. It's quite obvious that it was such a... Uh, revenge for successful revolution of dignity and this was a reflection of fears that what happened to Ukraine might happen again in Russia and just a couple of words about the referenda and uh, again about our censorship agency the brightest example of our government's bias is related to federalization and referenda. The Russian government supported, actually, and actually organized the so-called referendum in the Crimea, and then supported the referendum in uh, the Donbass and Lugansk regions. So what our law says about separatism, it says that you can actually go to jail behind the bars for five years just for saying something, mentioning something on your blog that Kaliningrad would do better, for instance, without Russia if it joined some of the European countries. And in St. Petersburg, there was a in a German movement in uh, uh, Kaliningrad in the former Königsberg 
that are saying they have to be independent because they historically built their culture that is different from Russia. And in Kaliningrad, right after the referendum in the Crimea, so some activists came out in the street with the Königsberg's flag demanding putting uh, this region back to Germany and the, right now they're under arrest in custody and uh, right now they expect a five-year detention, five-year uh, custody. And in August, actually, not the number of Siberian activists also decided to troll our government, blaming them that they're doing the F Siberian yeah. federalization yeah. marching. Yeah. And I had an interview with yeah. Artyom Loskotov and the inspirators yeah. from out there. And I asked Artyom, why do you think about for federalization of Siberia is a good idea? And he said, why not? Why should we support uh, federalization of Donbass in Ukraine? And we have everything and all the resources are put to Moscow and not, not, never getting anything back from from it, so we want more liberty right there. And for that interview, slon.ru was blocked. We had a warning from the censorship agency. When we get the next warning, we're going to be closed forever. Some of the websites were already closed like that in Russia in the internet media. So across all the TV channels, there is a lot of propaganda going on, and it's very painful to see that those people who visited Bolotnaya Square two or three years ago with me, the same people keep saying that, how would you go to Kiev? You're going to be beaten because you're Russian, because there are only fascists going on in the streets with Bandera flags. And I don't know, maybe you're laughing, but I can't laugh because it's so painful for me. These are my friends, my family, sometimes. These are my, this is my electorate, where I was elected in the South Dushino district, because I was trying to actually go for uh, the Moscow Duma election. It was a bit higher. When uh, some years ago we were actually putting one tent when distributing leaflets, and this time we were approaching, we were approached by that question like, are you supporting the Kiev's junta? I'm saying this because unfortunately the brain was very well washed in Russia and it was an easy, easy thing to do, but I, for, for, I hope that this process is reversible because people are not that goddamn stupid. They're in Russia who are ready to hate their neighbors just because I remember how people responded three years ago to whatever was going on and the spirits were different and what the propaganda actually generates on the one hand is just a massive propaganda on central channels and all the independent sources are being blocked. And in the recent address last, from, from last year, Putin said this, national, national renegades. And all those who are not in line with their politics are called betrayers, national betrayers. So this Dost or Rain, as it translates from Russian channel, it was the normal picture at the time when we were walking to our work places and there was a guy standing with the logo saying that you're, you're all betrayers, you have to be shot down right away on your head. So this is what actually also pitiful question as the world perceives Russia right now in 2014. So actually, this is not the vision of Russia. This is the vision of Putin. These were the, just the covers of most of, most um, popular magazines of just the brightest one. Actually, there are many more. There are so many Western. Uh, covers on new magazines, uh, magazine covers with President Putin. The, there in Russia, they speak that in Ukraine there are total fascists, and in Europe, only gays are there, and gay people in the US, they, every, the United States wants to actually uh, 
А с другой стороны, на Западе тоже make a slaves. And there was a myth cultivated that all the Russians are, are want the war. They love Putin. We need a strong hand. And so on. So it seems like the new iron cover is built on the both sides, and this is absolutely. It's not what we need. The people who want freedom, liberty, peace, prosperity, and what's that? And the values that we actually, for which sake, we put together and get together and speak out here, this our Libertarian Party activists in the recent peace march in Moscow. It says, forgive us in Ukrainian, though. And as you've seen, the pictures just... I want just to remind you, twice in Moscow there were uh, marches to support Ukraine and against the war on our neighbors that actually put together around the same amount of people that we had in the fair election meeting against Putin. That's why the biggest uh, message that I wanted to share with you in South and in Putin does not equal to Russia. I want to build this understanding in the whole world. Unfortunately, three years ago, we could not do it the same way you did. A year ago, I was in Maidan, and I came here as a journalist to make a report about Ukraine and the recent developments in Ukraine. I was totally fascinated by the things that were going on, by the spontaneous orders, like Tom mentioned, how people actually organized themselves and started helping each other, how the camps looked like, how actually the uh, self-defense uh, teams were working, how the medical treatment and first aid was organized, how they captured these uh, governmental buildings. I talked to doctors, I talked to activists, and just accidentally I ended up there at the Ukrainian house. Action. In the West, I normally hear that the Ukrainian revolution was organized by the Department of State from the United States, and I, I have a whole collection, a whole bunch of stuff on my iPad showing that it has nothing to do with the U.S. Department of State money. I think this is a brilliant example, and not only me that thinks so in Russia, there are many believers in that we need to learn from uh, dignity, from the capacity to organize and come in the square until we get it, actually, what we want, not listening to leaders whoever they may be, whoever, however good they may be, and may be different from what we want to actually put down. Not compromising anything, but just go for it and get what you want so that the corrupts this, to build the free country. So unfortunately, we couldn't make it. So far, we have this Soviet cult, which is not only living, but it's actually resurrecting and this is a strange mixture mixture of Soviet cult and those orthodox Christianity tradition so it means like schizophrenic a little bit but it seems to me that without that you can not go on as a result of uh, 91, 1991 revolution uh, people who were party uh, bureaucrats seized power, and we can't let this happen this time. So, what do we have to do in the situation where all these things happen and people are afraid to go out? We have to do the boring things every day like that. We invited people for public hearings because no one wants to do that. I'm not a supporter of theory of small things. 
марте тоже. В том смысле, что малыми делами заменялись большие. Because great things were replaced by small things. And it's not right thing to say that let's just plant flowers in our garden instead of doing something to stop Putin. And fighting tyranny, fighting Soviet heritage with the war rhetorics, and at the same time uh, listening what people to people's needs that are really far from global geopolitical questions and showing them how we can solve them without the intrusion of the government because they will see how you help them and they will want to uh, listen to you and then you can tell them about the corruption and that government isn't, needs to be replaced. Uh, we go out in the street, we publish newspapers, and we uh, distribute these newspapers in the streets and tell people what is happening in the district and what's happening in the world. And we take their contacts and uh, learn how to solve local issues. We are beaten and arrested. This is a photo from one of my campaigns where this unidentified man and not discovered by the police and he destroyed the signatures that I uh, gathered and even with this pressure we uh, are able to to work this young looking man he will turn 27 this uh, year and he uh, became a part of Deputy Council of Romansk and who will I be able to show people that this organization students for liberty and they have a hashtag liberty works uh, showing that liberty helps people to uh, have a better life and he is now uh, drafting a set of reform, including a tax cut, liberalization of public transport, abolishing ban on uh, trade in the street that was lobbied by uh, one of the owners of the uh, trade center, and we will not be able to build libertarian utopia like in the book. Uh, but we will be able, but we have internet, it's not banned yet, and we'll be able to tell people that liberty works, and probably the experience will be uh, uh, used somewhere else. And I started this with a slide on 1991 about the collapse of the Soviet Union, and see the majority of people here is at my age. And we're really the first uh, free generation of the territory of the former Soviet Union. And with the people that affect the future. And um, uh, whether we will be able to get to break free from the Soviet experience some some of us has had more success Georgia had great reforms due to Kaha Bendukidze and some countries like our countries is rolling back and yeah, but Everything is, uh, is in our hands, and you see this poster. We had this poster in my office, and all uh, money we used from that to our fund. So it is up to us. Thank you. Uh, we have a little bit of time for questions for Vera. Five minutes for questions. A microphone, please. 
please use a microphone. Well, really, it's not red, but it's orange. And sorry for that. The logo of the party. Well, honestly, I started join the party uh, when they already had logo. We have several color sets. We have anarcho-capitalist uh, gamma, yellow, and black, and we have blue on white and blue. I can hear the person asking the question. Sorry about that. The role of journal journalists is just as always. You have to tell the truth, you have to show the truth, show evidence. But it's in such hard historical situation is quite fragile and dangerous. This is why one of our publishing houses were, were closed. It's probably for the uh, article on Crimean Tatars called Russian Planet, one of the last uh, editions where they, they publish about the, uh, on the events, global events. We have anti-propaganda project which analyzes Dmitry Kisilov's uh, TV programs and they show uh, where, he, where he told lies and there is a similar project, Stop Fake, where they reveal official lies. And speaking about what you can do to destroy stereotypes, you have to talk to each other, visit each other, it was a good example from Georgia. The part of its territory was occupied during Georgian Russian War. During the tension with their relations, when they canceled visas for Russian tourists and said, visit us. And as a result, many journalists, including Russian journalists, came there and uh, saw that Galicia uh, became a great city not like they show it on Russian channels and became a very free, clean uh, city and we talked to people that were happy with the changes and no more stereotypes. We have a time for one question. Can you please cho choose the, 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 the person? Are you a supporter of a libertarian party? It's a hard question. But uh, I looked through uh, photos with flags. These unions are mostly tactical, and we have one principle and uh, liberty and a non intrusion to a personal life. And we would not create our party from scratch because we were people that didn't want to go into politics if we had a. Uh, movement like that. We don't have any allies. We have many allies that support the idea that Putin has to go. We have less allies on economical question and economical issues. We have some allies in political issues, but we have a, we do have allies. But in every specific case, we we have different allies. Thank you very much.